Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna sneak in a little bit of planting. I'm just thrilled that here we are in November and I can still plant. I mean, you know, rule of thumb is to plant, what, six weeks before a hard frost to let the plant have a chance to root in. And while that's probably true, less risk, I still feel like it's better for the plants to be in the ground than it is to be in containers. It's a little less risky because they're so much, uh, they're better insulated, their roots are, because they've got soil all the way around them rather than, you know, just sitting here on the ground. I mean, we kind of tuck ours in behind the greenhouse like I showed you in a recent video, and we do our best with the things that we're not able to get in the ground. Um, but anyway, I've got eight roses, one peony. I'll show you what isn't ideal is this. <laughs> My pots are falling apart, look at this. I think I could probably, yeah, look at that. Not ideal. These poor things need to get in the ground. Last spring, I just saw those roses and I just loved them. I thought they were so beautiful and I thought, well, I gotta snag these while they're here, while they still have them in stock. And then they just bloomed beautifully all of last year in their containers. And they bloomed beautifully all of this year in the containers. And I'm not really positive why I didn't get them planted exactly, except for maybe I was waiting for inspiration to hit for like the perfect spot. But we've got a lot of spots where these will be great. They just need to be in a full sun location, all of them, even the peony. The peony I got this year. And oh my word, is that not the most beautiful fall color ever? Now this is a garden treasure peony. Look at how gorgeous the soft yellow blooms are. And it did bloom in its container in our high tunnel. And then in terms of the other roses that we have here, I've got three of a variety called All Dressed Up. Look at that, it looks like an English rose. Beautiful, fragrant. They've got kind of like this mauve smoky pink. Love it. We've got two of the cream veranda, which you can see right here. Very, very softest of blush pinks with very creamy white on the outsides. Uh, beautiful hips, I might add. Look at those. Gorgeous rose hips. And we can see a little bit, a remnant of what one of these look like. In the back here, I have one Princess Charlene de Monaco. Again, another English looking rose. Huge rose hips on this one. Look at that. This one right here, which there's still like a little bit of dew. Oh, it's so pretty, look at that. This one's called State of Grace. It looks a lot like Distant Drums to me. Oops. And then we've got one climber called Kiss Me Kate Arbor Rose. Very fragrant. Beautiful big pink blooms. How big does this one get? 10 feet high, four feet wide. I need to go grab the gator, get some Biotone starter fertilizer. We'll get the roses loaded up and then we're gonna head out, get them planted. I still have some bulbs in the back of this gator to plant, but I'm gonna be using the auger to dig holes. Let's grab some Biotone. Oh, do I have any? Behind the orchard fence, probably. Also, just recently got these done and I've just been so happy. So, so happy with this new look over here. They're so pretty, the colors. And they should do great, especially with our mild temperatures. Okay, task at hand. First two plants placed, I've got the State of Grace rose right here. I think that'll be really pretty. It uh, says it's a medium size and really rounded and bushy. So medium size to me means about four by four, uh, typically. So that's kind of what I'm planning right here. We've got a totem pole panicum there, a tater tot arb. And we're gonna be filling in with more perennials and such right there. And then I put the peony right over here, kind of by the hyssop and the going bananas daylilies. No, these aren't going bananas, these are orange smoothie. Right, so these are a pale orange, the peony is a pale yellow, and then we've got the purple hyssop, which is still blooming. 
This one grows about two feet tall, two to three feet wide, so it'll just fill in this area beautifully. I think those two will be beautiful over here. And then the other ones that we have, the cream verandas are really small rows. Uh, so those I'm, I might find a spot for out here. I might put them in closer to the house. Um, but the other ones, the Princess Charlene de Monaco gets a little bit taller, like five and a half feet. And the all dressed ups do as well. And I have three of those. So those can kind of be a little bit more on their own to create a statement on their own. Before I get these roses planted, I did want to touch really quickly on the differences between a rose that has been grafted and one that's been grown on its own roots. I have an example of both here today. So many roses like this one here are grafted. This is such a good example. You can see the graft union really clearly right here. So the top of this rose is the all dressed up variety. The rootstock, which is the portion below the graft, is a different type of rootstock. It's a tougher rose, probably more cold tolerant, more uh, vigorously growing. It has better attributes than the all dressed up roots would have. There seem to be quite a number of opinions out there on whether or not you should actually bury that graft union underneath the soil surface or if you should leave it up above. You can see these have been potted up above and that's how my parents garden center have been potting them forever. That's how I used to always plant my roses and I never really had a problem doing it that way. Uh, but the last few years I have been burying that graft union and have really good luck with them rooting in really well and that plant seems to be a little bit stronger. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. So what I mean by that is that if you bury this plant instead of like right here you can see it's like up on a trunk it's almost like a little tiny itty bitty tree if you bury it about an inch below that graft union so right in here you prevent the plant from rocking in the wind because this is the most uh, fragile part on the plant right here right where that graft is that's where it's the most tender so if you can protect it both from freezing by kind of mulching it up uh, or burying it uh, and also you protect it from any kind of wind damage I, I don't know, I feel like that's the way to go. Oftentimes too, when you bury this graft union, the upper portion, the all dressed up variety, might even form its own roots underneath the soil surface, therefore making the plant stronger, and it discourages suckers from coming up from the um, rootstock. Now, I am no rose expert. I'm just sharing my experience through the past several years. Like the spring before last and this spring, I planted a bunch of bare root roses, put all of the graft unions below the soil surface. They're all doing phenomenally well. But then, like I said, I have planted them with the graft union above the soil surface and haven't had a huge hard time with them either. So there you go. And then here we have an own root rose. See, this is the Kiss Me Kate. It says O-R on the tag. That means own root. It looks quite a bit different here. You can see that there's no long stem. There's no like bud union. This just goes straight down into the roots flare right here. So I'll just be planting this one about right in here, right above, right where those roots start. Again, as opposed to this one here that's grafted where I will be burying it up to about here. I know things like that can be confusing, especially when you get online and you read all kinds of different things and that can be really frustrating. I un totally understand that. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing today. I will be burying the graft union on the grafted roses. Um, and I'll try to get a close-up of that too so you can see it. I am using the starter fertilizer as well. I think I've already got it out there. Yep, there's the fertilizer. Let me show you on this one. This is the State of Grace. You can see the rootstock. You can see the graft union right here. So I will be burying mine about right there. So you can see right in here, graft union is just below the soil surface. I leave the little tag on so I can identify what this is later on if I forget. And I did tear the peat pot off. I know eventually these break down and these are more broken down than they typically are. You know, if you plant them the first year, you get them. But we're so dry here that it usually takes a long time for these to break down even underneath the soil. And sometimes those peat pots are waxed, which makes them take even longer to break down. So since we're so dry, we just usually remove these just as a rule um, to make sure that the roots are free to venture out. And doesn't that look great there? I hope it was helpful seeing kind of a close up of how I'm putting these in the ground. I think this is gonna be great right here. So we'll get the peony planted and then we're gonna move on to some other roses, maybe right out in here.
All three of the all dressed ups are right here. Right beneath this forest pansy red bud, we've got some lemon meringue baptisia here. So these will be done blooming by the time, they might overlap a little bit, uh, but by the time these are blooming. Legend of the Fall bottle brush, panicum totem pole, and then the Princess Charlene de Monaco I'm gonna plant right over here. We've got a Budlia, a Miss Ruby right here, and a Penicetum right here. Anyway, not very much out here yet. This will be helpful. Oh yeah, those roses, that'll be really pretty right there when they're, you know, real tall. Mm, I'm gonna love it. I do think we're gonna put another evergreen right here, eventually. going to be beautiful. That big double pink rose right here. We've got a sensation honeysuckle on that side. I went ahead and planted both of the vines on this side of the fence because you know we'll have grassy area and bulbs and I'm not positive that we're going to actually have a flower bed on the outside of the fence yet. We might uh, but just in the event that we decide to kind of keep it clear out here or just do something very narrow I wanted to make sure the bulk of the shrubs or vines were on the inside of the fence. So I kind of started training the canes that were there, weaved them in and out, have two of them, kind of two main canes, one going each way. And then there's one that's a little bit flexible and kind of shooting off the other direction. So this one, I'm gonna probably clip off and use this in a arrangement anyway. Uh, otherwise I'll wait and kind of train it straight back toward the fence. All right, so we just have two roses left. These are both cream verandas. They grow about two and a half feet tall by two feet wide. They're also own root roses. Uh, so they don't have the graft that we have to worry about. In fact, this is a good example to look at. You can see how this rose just goes right down into the, there's the root flare right there. No graft. So we gotta go find a good spot for these. So I think I'm gonna put one right at the end of the west side here. So we're at the end of the pathway where the urns are. I had a winter, well it's still there, the winterberry holly is not doing well. It had like one stem that lived through last winter. Uh, so it's looked puny all year. Anyway, I think I'm gonna pop that out and put the rose right in here. And then the second one, I've got a spot out here. Since it's a smaller statured rose, I kinda wanna put it toward the front-ish. I'm thinking in between this Budlea here and the Arctic Fire Yellow Dogwood, somewhere like right there. It feels so good to get these in the ground knowing they've been in their containers for as long as they have, poor things. Love it with their orange rose heads. Yeah, I think that that's gonna look really good right there. I did position it a tiny bit closer to the Budlia because the dogwood will get quite a bit bigger. And I think the colors will be pretty. This is a dark blue butterfly bush. We'll have the yellow stems and the green leaves and then the creamy pink right here. I'm gonna love it. And there's still gonna be room because it only gets two feet wide. So that means it only gets one foot on each side of the trunk. So, I mean, it's almost at its full width here. We'll still have room to kind of swing a small perennial around the front. And that is it for today's video. That was my last pile of stuff that I just really wanted to get in the ground before winter came. If I get anything else planted, that's just cream. That's just an extra bonus, extra job done, um, which we may still have an opportunity to do. Now, I still do have quite a few tulip bulbs to plant and we've had dahlias to dig. So that's two big projects I still have left. I'm gonna take a slight break in planting to go help with the windows, the Christmas windows down at the garden center. So that's kind of next. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.